Now, the other main news story, of course, is the continuing troubles in the Middle East. Israeli tanks amassing at the Lebanese border with the Middle East, literally on the brink of war. We're delighted to be joined by Yotam Kafino, uh, Israeli correspondent for the Daily Telegraph. Yotam, a very good afternoon to you. We've heard, I mean, you and I have spoken so much uh, about what actually can or might happen. We've seen the attacks, uh, the, the, the killing of the, uh, the, the, the Hezbollah leader the other day by the IDF. We're now talking about the Israeli tanks on the border. Is the Middle East on the brink of war, my friend, or is that hyperbole, this side of wherever? I would say we are at a war we have been for a while. And the latest that I'm hearing from the source that I'm speaking to, who's familiar with the situation on the border, is that Israel has already begun sending in special troops across the border. In other words, Israeli troops are in southern Lebanon, uh, conducting target raids against Hezbollah posts along the border, and that the ground invasion is likely to happen very soon. In fact, it might be already come in, in, in the coming days. So that's a, a huge development, obviously, because this is what everyone has been waiting for, the, the ground invasion uh, of southern Lebanon, which is really the only way that Israel can push back Hezbollah as far as possible in order to return their 60,000 civilians who were interned in this place along the border. Can I ask you, um, because you're out there and you know, and we, we report this stuff, but there's, there's many things when I finish an interview like this I want to ask you, but I wanted to, I wanted to ask you this importantly. Um, Israel, presumably, is a, is, is a superpower, I get that. But do they honestly believe that they can rid the Middle East of Hamas, Hezbollah, and maybe the Houthis as well, because they are susceptible from all sides, which is probably the reason that they're doing what they're doing. Yes, they're supported by the West, but is this, is this really within their... Re is this possible, or is this going to turn into one of those wars that just doesn't end and, and we have another Gaza on our hands. I mean, I read today a million people have been displaced as the Lebanese Prime Minister. What's the reality of Israel's actions, do you think? I think, first of all, you cannot eradicate an ideology, and I said that from day one mm. on October the 7th, when Israel put down this uh, goal to eradicate how much. You can't eradicate a, a, an ideology. That's just politics. But what you can do is that you can damage those terror groups so much that they don't constitute a, an immediate threat to you. That's what's happening in Gaza. Hamas doesn't constitute an immediate threat to the people across the border in Israel, and that's what they're doing with Hezbollah now. But if you're asking me if we're going to get to the point where Israel has eradicated all of its enemies in the region, no, because there are millions of anti-Semites, jihadists, who are uh, being fed from, from childbirth, really, to hate Israel. So they'll grow up and they'll try to eradicate Israel. So we will see the next Hassan Nasrallah, we will see the next Yahya Sinwar, unless there's some sort of change in the Muslim uh, countries in the Middle East, that they should not uh, try to eradicate uh, Israel. But until that happens, Israel can only really do damage control. The other question I wanted to ask, and I asked you this, I remember before about about Hamas and the Gazan people. The Lebanese Prime Minister to say, oh, these strikes will have displaced a million people. Is the Lebanese Prime Minister, is he a supporter of, of Hezbollah? Is he in their pocket? Do they, do they have control over the government? Because in both of these situations, as a very naive bystander, we have two terrorist organisations operating inside countries whilst attacking other countries. Why don't their own governments do more about them if they know their terrorism? It's a good question. Lebanon is much more complicated than Gaza. Gaza, Hamas runs Gaza, period. Anyone who works in Gaza know that, the NGOs know that. There's no way around it. Lebanon is different. Hezbollah is in the government, but Hezbollah's military is stronger than their own army, than the Lebanese army. And Hezbollah controls large parts of Lebanon. But that being said, it doesn't mean that Hezbollah is hugely popular. You have plenty of Sunnis and Christians who see Hezbollah as a jihadist, terror group that is dragging the whole country into an unnecessary war. Civilians are literally dying now in Lebanon for the sake of Yahya Sinwar and Hamas. It's lunacy. And that's why the Lebanese prime minister, a year into Hezbollah attack in Israel on a daily basis, is now saying, oh, maybe we should have a ceasefire. He should have said that from day one, but he doesn't have any real power. Hezbollah is the power in Lebanon, and I think that's fair to say that they will probably continue to be so. Uh, at least until they've been damaged enough for, for Israel to, to not see them as an immediate threat anymore.
Because presumably, uh, and I'm not a, a military strategist, but the answer has to be somewhere down the line that the action or the rhetoric convinces the people of Gaza or the people of Lebanon that these terrorist organisations are not doing what they're doing in those people's best interest and they not join forces but turn on these organisations from inside. But I guess they're so powerful that can't happen. But that's the most perfect answer, isn't it? Yeah, I think look, we can look at the Middle Ages in Europe. Eventually, people turned on the kings. Yeah. Eventually, they were sick and tired of being patronized and being treated like like uh, like garbage. Eventually, it will happen, but apparently, we're a long way from there because both of us, Islam and Jihad, Hezbollah, millions of people still support them. And it's, it's going to take a long time for Israel to really damage them to a point where they don't constitute uh, a threat all of them, ranging from the Houthis of Yemen to Lebanon and Iran, of course. But one day, I believe that this region will wake up and you don't have to love Israel, but at least don't join a jihadist terrorist organization. Um, one final question about Netanyahu. Massively unpopular, those demonstrations in Israel. What he's doing in Lebanon, what he's done in Gaza, is that turning the tide in his favor at home with the Israelis or is he still deeply unpopular? No, it is. Look, Netanyahu will never be an, an all-encompassing figure. He's loaded by at least half of Israel, but he is, he is turning the tide. And in fact, yesterday, one of the opposition parties joined his coalition. Uh, he, it's only four lawmakers, but nevertheless, um, he, he's getting more. He's getting more support, and he's also being seen now as finally taking proper responsibility. But it's taken a long, long time, and Netanyahu is not handling the entire war very well. But what he's doing now, I think few Israelis can argue against, which is taking out uh, the terror leaders and damaging Hezbollah once and for all. It should have been done a long time ago, but it's happened.